Oh, you're not fooling around, are you? Just right to it. Uh, how do I feel about saying goodbye? I, uh, I have incredibly mixed emotions, which I'm sure is the, the most cliché thing I could, I could say at this point, but it's true. After five years, I am definitely ready to move on from Ted. I have uh, been through a lot with him, and uh, I, I love him to death, but he's exhausting. I'm happy to say goodbye to Michael's hair. I'm happy to say goodbye to Michael's problems. I hate saying goodbye, actually. I mean, we couldn't believe we were making the show in the first place, to be honest. So five years is amazing. It feels like it's time to move on to whatever's next in the world and, and, and in life. And on the other hand, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's sad. It's sad. I'm just sort of anticipating how I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Like, what am I going to say to people on our final day of shooting? What's there to say? There's so much to say, yet what can you say? This group of people came into my life for a definite purpose, and um, I'll just, I'll love them forever. It's going to be very tough. I, I'm, I'm getting speeches about it. I want to enjoy every minute now. I'm thrilled that I got to be part of it before it goes away. I wish we could stay. It'll be fine for me eventually. Anything that has genuine impact should have a definite shelf life and shouldn't drag on and get watered down. I'm glad we're going out when, we're all, when we all still love it and, uh, and can feel good about it. We've all worked really hard and I'm ready. I'm ready to go. It's been said that an ending is also a beginning. As the Queer as Folk series finale looms, it is only appropriate to look at what the series has accomplished, the doors it has opened that can truly never be closed. Queer as Folk was the very, very first, 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 first ever television show to deal with the gay community on a serious level. The show invited all of us in and said, and not only do you deserve a place at the table, but you got the whole restaurant. There was a time when African-American programming didn't exist. And it's far from the case now. Queer's Folk has definitely opened the door for more honest portrayals of, of gay people. Queer's Folk has given some weight to the, the gay characters on television. You know, before they were fluffy, pull in uh, Hollywood Squares type of characters. Foppish, um, asexual, kind of silly characters just and never even spoken of as gay really you know they never actually went through with anything they just kind of you know i used to look to and i'm not kidding i used to look to ricky lake for gay images in the media that was as good as it got those hopped up club kids you know we're all i'm gay okay you know whereas you know now there's some there's some anchoring to it when we first began we needed posters and the billboards of the print ads and a lot of things were experimented with but what the network found was the most effective which is the words queer as folk on a black field that word queer people were intrigued by it, people were frightened by it the only reason i think they could call queer eye for the straight guy queer eye for the straight guy is because queer as folk existed that that word was so taboo until it was in our title. You know, when there's been a lot of suppression in a certain area, you have to bust through it. You can't go gently into that night. Queer's Folk has depicted these characters in explicit ways, in real ways. I hope that we will be remembered as the first people who dared to give gay people sex lives. You know, we were able to be full, complicated, screwed up, sexual people. And I think now, because of us, you have the L word, and, um, you know, and, and hopefully after that, then you will have gay characters that are sexualized and humanized that go off into all different sorts of TV shows, and it's just part of the fabric, which is what it should be. I hope that that we have left our thumbprint on on the negative, you know? I hope that people will think of time before Queer as Folk and time after Queer as Folk. In the last few months, Logo and Here, two networks devoted solely to gay programming, have emerged. But when Queer as Folk began in 1999 as a controversial British miniseries, it really was the first of its kind. Its frank approach to same-sex sex caused a splash large enough to ripple across the Atlantic. 
but on American shores, such candid explorations of gay life were hardly welcome. Frankly, you know, we're talking about the bottom line here. We're talking about does it make sense as a business decision to finance a television series from the gay perspective? I think that's probably what this show has done the most to influence. We read an article in the LA Times about the British queer folk, and it was it said uh, the best show you'll never see on American television. I looked at the British show and almost had heart failure. It was very, very graphic in nature, language, uh, sexuality. It was so cheeky, it was so out there. And there was a rumor going around that Showtime was interested in doing this show. So we said, well, would you consider us? We'd like to, you know, volunteer <laughs> for the suicide mission. But there has to be a condition. And the condition is, it can't be a watered down version of Queer as Folk. But there's no point doing this. Say it! And they absolutely agree with us. Long before Queer as Folk started shooting, it was described as controversial and revolutionary. Long before the media asked, is America ready? The producers wondered, where is everybody? Casting, that was a very interesting process. And so, the ride began. I walked into my first audition, I was like, are we doing this? Because this is crazy, y'all. I got bored. <laughs> I know, getting your dick sucked can be so tedious. The energy of that first script I read was unlike anything I had read before. I was reading love scenes going, I can't believe they're going to do this. This is off the hizzuk. I oh, didn't say that because we didn't say that back then. It's tired now, but it wasn't even invented then, so it's amazing what happens in five years. I first got involved in the show because I knew it would be historic, and it was necessary. If we didn't dive in and do it, who would? Peter Page had been asked to audition for the part of Ted, and all his friends said, oh, no, you don't want to play that part. I wish I had a friend who had said that to me. No, no, no. Scott was not our physical image of Ted, but he just had a quality that was absolutely right. The next person to walk in was um, Peter Page. Peter came in for the part of Ted, and the minute he opened his mouth... Magic doesn't happen by magic, you know. We said, no, 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 that's, this isn't right, but you would be perfect for Emma. Easy, boys, there's, there's a... More than enough for me to go around for everyone. So everything was sort of coming together. But finding Brian and Justin proved to be very difficult. People were very afraid of these characters. Play gay in Hollywood? Now why would I want to do that? They knew they could suffer as actors for doing this. And a lot of the agencies wouldn't send us people. Then I think it pushed the beginning of production back several months. Linda would say to us, uh, you're seeing three people today. And I'd say, three people? That's all. Well, you were supposed to see 20, but they all canceled. Amidst the setbacks, one person so firmly believed in the series, she paid for her own trip to audition in Toronto. Sharon Glass arrived just in time to galvanize low spirits. When I read the script, I went, oh, all right. I went into the producer and said, are you going to shoot this? And they said, every frame. I said, I want to be in on this one. And she said, you know, fuck everyone who doesn't want to be a part of it, and they'll be really sorry. And she was just instrumental in getting our energies up, being a cheerleader for, for the show. How about a nice big thank you? This was one of my first auditions when I got to the city. And then we landed on Randy Harrison, who looked like he was 10. How old are you really? 20. 19. 18. But well, what is this, a missile launch? 17. I had a lot of reactions to it, but I, I definitely thought, wow. He scared us all, because maybe he's too young. How's it going? but he should, he should scare us a little bit. I just saw the face of God. His name is Brian Kinney. Gil Harold reads the scene, and afterwards he lit up a cigarette. He was so Brian-esque, I was just blown away. I had faith in him from the beginning, and I knew that he could do it. The examination of sex, drugs, deviant behavior, all those things were interesting to me because of their potentially you know, transformative power. They were incredibly brave, incredibly courageous. The guy's got balls. I'm in awe of all of them. The show finally debuted in December of 1999 to a firestorm of criticism. It's going to make an impact. And no apologies. Queer as folk is a go. Attacks on the show came in from the right. Mike Haley, a spokesperson for the conservative watchdog group Focus on the Family, claimed the show did a disservice to our youth and culture. They were prepared for bomb threats, you know, when we first went on there. They gave us security briefings, and it was all, oh, dear, you know. Mm. The only disappointment I have is that we were trying to elect a president in Florida five years ago, that embarrassing moment in American history. And there was so much mayhem going on there that nobody even noticed that we premiered. So we kind of missed all that. 